Hello, everyone. I just want to explain what does it mean to be a Syrian. To be lonely, weak, unwanted, rejected, hated. This is my 22 day at Kuala Lumpur International Airport. I'm stuck here. I'm living here since seven of this month. They are uh, not allowing me to enter, and no other countries are accepting us. Even the countries which we need no visa, only an arrival visa, they sent me back. Even airlines are not allowing me to board when I have all the proper documents, including my return ticket. I don't know what to do. There is no hope. I tried to contact each and every human organization, including uh, UN organizations, but they come back to me with uh, a sorry answer. We can do nothing. So I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm just walking around, sleeping on a chair. No place to sleep, no place to sleep or to take a shower or what, so whatsoever. So yes, this is me. Just counting days. That was Hassan al Kantar in his own words. Hassan, a Syrian, has been stranded at the International Airport of Malaysia for now nearly 40 days and counting a partial consequence of his country's civil war. He says no country will take him in because of his Syrian passport. Hassan's journey began in 2006 when he left Syria to avoid serving in the army. He lived in the United Arab Emirates for 10 years until he lost his work permit and was expelled from the UAE. In 2017, he was sent to Malaysia, one of the only countries willing to grant Syrians visas on arrival. He lived there on a three-month visa until he was kicked out again. Hassan was then turned away from several countries until he landed back at the airport in Malaysia. He now says he is virtually stranded, unable to enter Malaysia, and not able to fly anywhere else. And he says it's all despite having the correct paperwork. He's been documenting his plight on Twitter, calling on the global community for help. It is the subject of tonight's Spotlight. We spoke with Hassan over the weekend, but it's not so easy to coordinate the logistics with him. So we are happy to welcome in his place Dr. Zudi Jasser, founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. And Dr. Jasser, is there anything that can be done for Mohammed? Well, it's interesting. I think he brings to light uh, not only the fact of what's happening in Syria, uh, but many of the countries in the Gulf, and, and especially the Emirates and Dubai, and uh, um, where he has been, allow people to live there indefinitely for decades without ever becoming citizens, without ever really getting any rights. So when their work is done, they have to leave. So he, this gentleman, even though he had nothing to do with the revolution and really isn't technically a refugee, becomes a refugee because the countries in the Middle East, the way they control the identity of their uh, nation state is by never really letting people immigrate. They really only let them come in for work uh, and uh, on work visas, some of them for decades, they can't really own property there. So this is the problem is that we find millions going in droves to Europe, going into the West, and slowly the, you know, the definition of a refugee is someone who ultimately wants to go back to his home. Most Syrians want to do that, but what we're going to find is ultimately many of the Syrians in Europe will end up staying there and never really going back because that was not only the way the Europeans and the West treats people that they welcome, but it's really what the Syrian government regime wants is they want it to depopulate and change the ethnic makeup of Syria. Dr. Jasser, are you surprised that uh, Mr. Kantar has not been gotten, has not received any help from any UN agency or any other organization? Well, the problem is it's uh, they're drinking from a fire hose when it comes to the Syrian issue. So he gets lumped into a the Syrian problem when in fact I think it's fascinating that Malaysia on the one hand hasn't imprisoned him but on the other hand he basically is in prison in this in this airport and it's almost like a bad scene out of my wife reminded me of the movie uh, Terminal with uh, Tom Hanks where he was stuck in the airport for the entire movie because of the war that broke out in his home so I'm surprised yeah that they haven't been able in a microscopic level he really has in his story an element that could do a lot of teaching for the global problem of why there's such a refugee problem. And I'm surprised not only with the, well, not really the UN, which is completely useless on most levels, but so many of the human rights organizations, I, I, I'm surprised that they haven't been able to get him to his family in Ecuador, 
which would really be a place that he's been trying to get to. He tried to go through Cambodia and got sent right back to Kuala Lumpur. It's remarkable. I, and I suppose the only advice anybody can really give him right now is just to keep uh, pressing his case on social media. Yeah, and I think that's the power of social media is that you take one case, one incident that becomes viral and gets the attention of the world. And I think the world starts to learn not only of the plight of the millions of refugees out of the ethnic cleansing happening from the Assad regime in Syria, but they also start to learn exactly how refugees, how foreigners are treated in Saudi Arabia and Dubai and Qatar and the Emirates, where they never have rights and they can't go back when their work visas are done. And, and these are governments that are supposedly Muslim governments, and yet their citizens have no, no rights really. And only their citizens have rights, but immigrants have no rights. Dr. Zudi Jasser, founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. And Dr. Jasser, uh, thanks so much for doing this. We appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks for having me.